Hello Internet, I'm the Disney Brain, and welcome back to the Live and Maddie Review. It's been a while, but this week's episode does give me something of great value to discuss. Er, at least certain parts do. Spoiler warning now, you know the drill. With all that said, let's jump into role model Aruni. We start things off with the Rooney boys as they trade some banter around while running into a homesick Mama Rooney, who also misses Pelicans too for some reason. Does this plot thread go anywhere? Not really. Joey ends up with a pelican on his chest and that's about it. So moving on to the main plot brings us to the set of Sing It Louder, where they are recreating what was apparently a classic episode from the original Sing It Loud. The kicker here is that in that episode, the boys of the cast won a woodblock derby race against the girls because obviously, but Liv wants to rewrite the script to make it so that the girls win, so she brings the proposal to Zack, a network executive for the show, and subtle this episode is not. The man is a demographic spewing robot whose patronizing is just too obvious, so Liv tries to help her two younger female co-stars see the error in assuming that all girls aren't into cars, and if they had found a way to bring back Andy specifically for this episode, maybe that point would have been a little clearer, but she's only ever referenced by name but we'll talk plenty about how this episode seeks to break down gender roles later on. There's also a side plot about Maddie and Willow eating some hot peppers for a tiny sombrero. They're inspired to enter said contest from seeing no female names on any of the sombreros, except this doesn't really work as a legitimate motivation, mainly because there's no way Maddie could have read through every single name on the multiple tiny sombreros and then assessed all of them to be male names in such a short time. It makes no sense. Weird as it is for me to say, Maddie was, well, she was wrong. Whoa, that felt weird. And what's more, the fact that there are unisex names on the wall kind of steps all over the message here, because if it's sexist to assume that girls can't be into cars, which it is, then assuming girls can't be named Alex, for example, is a more downplayed but still very present component of that same sexism. And the episode doesn't really effectively address that error in judgment here, they just sort of play it off in the closing minutes. So getting back to woodblock racing, Liv is actually dressed like Rosie the Riveter, a nice reference to the feminist icon that represented the working woman of World War II. Earlier on, Liv had Zack agree to a pre-race of sorts so that if the girls win, the conclusion of the episode they're filming would be changed. So the trio builds a car, races the guys, and wins. There's some fun physics we could dive into with the race itself, but this probably isn't the place. And that's role model Aruni. Does it effectively tackle its important message? Well, not entirely. Let's break it down. The whole point here is to show that girls can do anything guys can do, and that's great, a message that far outweighs anything they've done in season 4 to this point. But let's be honest with ourselves here, there are a ton of missed chances. Liv talks about unfair gender-based stereotypes, and the best she can come up with is cars, shoes, and the color pink? Really? So the fact that many women make less money for doing the same job, that isn't unfair to you? The fact that K-12 education does very little to encourage females in STEM subjects beyond a certain point, that isn't unfair enough to be mentioned? The fact that actual misogynists can win the highest office on the planet, that's not both unfair and harmful? But yeah, sure, let's make Pink the victim of the day. And why does this need to be framed as a boys versus girls competition anyways? The boys that they're racing against said nothing wrong. In fact, they never said anything. All girls are different, so why not set up a plot that allows the girls to embrace what they've already chosen to love and let that carry the narrative? Because the whole point of equality isn't beating boys or completely rejecting prototypically feminine interests. It's having the same choices and opportunities as boys and being yourself, even if you do like rainbows, as Ruby does. You can't even say that their car not being pink is significant because now it feels like being contrarian just for the sake of it. Guys, this is not an easy topic of discussion by any means, but that doesn't mean you can't make a powerful episode about it. Heck, the best episode of this show covered the issue in an incredible way, and they chose a great angle from which to attack the topic by using the rating system and the pressure to change that came from it as a catalyst. But between this episode and Ask Her More Rooney a while back ago, it feels like they haven't addressed the topic with the same level of fervor or thought. They have so many characters, Andy, Willow, and Maddie, of course, who proudly embraces not following prototypical gender norms and just being themselves. So why aren't they given a real place in this narrative? It would make more sense. This episode functions fine as is, but we've already seen the same concept handled better in the same show. So I'm left to ask, why even bother if they weren't going to take more of a risk at the very least? Perpetuating a stereotype about girls and cars is bad, but not nearly as harmful as what a group of girls banded together to stop in Raid of Rooney. My estimation is that a lot of people will end up reading this episode very highly because of its subject matter, more so than how it's handled, and that's honestly fine. Let's not get it twisted. I'm a firm supporter of everything episodes like this are trying to do and say, 
But if we as a viewership are completely satisfied with a bare bones but no meat approach to female empowerment storylines, then that's all we'll ever get. And this isn't just a Liv and Maddie thing. Girl Meets World also kind of fumbled their attempt to highlight the same topic. They still got an okay episode out of it, but when the topic matters this much, I don't think it's at all unreasonable to ask for something greater. But here, the network producer is a cartoon character. Liv is the only voice for empowerment. Their frame of reference for that empowerment is limited at best. All the other main characters are in nonsense plots, and the other males on the Sing It Louder set have zero lines. Changing even one of those features would have improved the overall episode immensely. It strikes me as an improper setup for what could have otherwise been an inspired tale. But despite all of that, what we got is still decent. The potential was clearly there for something bigger and better, but the fact that they even attempted still makes this kind of a season 4 highlight. But, as always, let me know what you thought of the episode. Am I asking for too much, or could they have done something a lot better? Either way, thanks for watching. Challenge accepted! <laughs> you know, I rarely know what you mean by that, but I always love the results.